Hey everybody, today I'm going to finish planting up our jumbo pots. These are the ones that we put along our driveway. They're a bit of a showpiece and they're an opportunity for us to try some of the new varieties of plants. Also mix different plants together that we might not normally put together just to see how they do. It's a lot of fun for us and about three days ago my sister and I had pretty much committed to which plants we were going to put in each pot and how we were going to arrange them. And then today we had a little plant powwow and turn that on its head because we were looking and we said, you know what, we're following the usual formula. We've got a tall thriller in the center, we've got a filler around the outside, and then we've got our spillers that go over the edge. And we said, what can we do with each one of these remaining three containers that will just be something different for us, something we haven't done before, or that's gonna completely change the look. And I'm pretty happy that we did that because it is allowing us to try some new things and experiment a little bit more. And hey, if they don't work, it just is going to look a little funny for a couple months, but I think with these plants in there, it's going to look fabulous no matter what we do. It's one of those things where we can hardly mess it up when you have good plants. And so we wanted to start with this Angelonia here, and this is the Archangel Cherry Red. Beautiful fruit punch red color in there, and Angelonia is great because not only is it heat tolerant, it's drought tolerant, and also deer resistant. Deer don't really like this plant at all. So that's kind of a trifecta. Now when you have a plant like this, especially with a color like this, it can be a little bit hard to match because it's not a red, it's not a pink, and you just kind of struggle a little bit sometimes when you're, if you're really trying to put something with it. And that's where plants like this one here, this is the uh, Cabaret uh, Strawberry Parfait Calabracoa, and it has this veining. And so if you're trying to get colors to match and you're really struggling with it, look for plants with either like some veining or maybe a gradient from you know light to dark or like an ombre where it goes from one color to the next because a lot of times those kind of patterns are going to trick your eye and it's going to allow colors that maybe wouldn't normally match like this is really quite pink but we kind of kept looking at it going you know what if that's down there and these are up here our eyes are going to read the center of this as being very similar to this and so we we're really happy that we had mixed these two and then we decided we were going to go with a yellow begonia in here as well now originally we had this in the center and then we were going to arrange these around it but we're changing that up today so what we ended up deciding and i mean this isn't earth shattering or anything but it is something different for us and it's definitely outside of like our norm we said let's put these just one, two, three across. And by doing that, we're almost creating like a window box blocking kind of thing going on. And then we can work with our plants on each side. So they're almost as like there's a front and a back. It's just, I mean, something we thought, you know, that is something we haven't done. And we don't know exactly how the Angelonia is gonna grow in that type of situation. And we did decide to do three Angelonia in here. Angelonia gets pretty big, but sometimes it can be a little bit behind some of our other plants, especially like Calabracoa and Petunias, because those are, you know, a little bit colder weather plants. They're ready to, you know, bloom and, and take off really early in the season. Meanwhile, Angelonia, it likes to hang out a little while until it gets a little warmer. So it's, it's one that sometimes, you know, if you put it in early in the season with like a, a vigorous petunia, sometimes it gets a little swallowed up, then it doesn't get quite as much sun. And then it isn't until later, you know, in the season that it really can take off. So we thought, you know what, we're putting three in here. And that was when we were putting in the center. That's uh, quite a few plants. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn this just a little bit because I feel like it'll kind of widen it a little bit. No, you know what? I should have stuck with the way I had it anyway. You see, I'm, I'm kind of decisive and indecisive at the same time. So we're going to get this third one in. And again, this is just something different for us. I don't know. I don't mind it at all. And then our plan for the next part is to put uh, Calabracoa right here in the center. And I better make sure that I'm looking at this carefully. So this is going to drape over the edge. Now I don't want to put it too close to the edge because sometimes with Calabracoa and Petunias, if you do that, everything goes over the edge and then you don't end up with that carpet on top. Now, sometimes they get so big, it doesn't matter, but I don't want to risk that. So I'm just putting it kind of right in the halfway point. I'm going to say between the two and I'm going to get that pushed in. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side. Uh, and then we were trying to decide which begonias to use. So our real thought was, okay, what do we have that's yellow? Because we want to play off the yellow centers of the Calabracoa, and it's a good contrast, matches really nice also, or looks really nice against that cherry red. So we had a couple of options. So there's uh, these kind of, I think they're uh, Himalis, 
or hymalis, not sure how it's pronounced, begonias. These get beautiful flower coverage. This one here is the Amstel Blitz. It can do part shade, two shade, but we've had it in the sun here in northern Michigan and it's done fine. So these other plants, they do best in full sun. So we were kind of like, well, let's not risk this one. I, I bet where we are, this would be just fine. But I also was looking at going, it gets lots of flowers, but the flower's a little smaller. So we wanted to try something with a little bit bigger flower. So then I started looking at this Iconia variety. And this one is the Portofino Yellow. The Portofino Yellow is one of those really nice ones. It's a mounding and trailing variety. So you can see already it's starting to do that little bit of cascade, drapes over the edge. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, really do love them. But we were again thinking, bigger flower. Let's just really take it to the next level. And so the two varieties that we have that fall into that kind of big flowered begonia, and they do get a nice size as well, would be the nonstop uh, and then the selenia. And you can see there is quite a difference in the yellows. The nonstop is a much darker, richer yellow, whereas the selenias are, you know, this one's a little bit more of a lemony yellow. Uh, we have found that the selenias do a really good job of getting quite large, both the flower and the plant. Nonstops are pretty good as well. So what we decide to do is we're gonna put uh, nonstops on one side and selenias on the other. And that way we can do kind of a direct comparison in these containers. So kind of, just one of those things that we haven't really done before. Also, last year, we didn't put really any begonias in these big pots, uh, partly because we, we overfilled those pots. Uh, we just put so many plants in there. I don't know. We were, I don't know. We thought we were doing, like, we had this brilliant idea that, oh, there's such big pots. We can put as many plants in there as we want. And in reality, it's like, yeah, there is a point where it gets to be too much, where we had, like, so many petunias in there that they were carpeting everything. There wasn't much airflow. And so we were having trouble with like just the undersides were mildewy. Everything looked great. Like we, and we didn't really lose plants either. Although some of the smaller ones like the euphorbia, if we would have had a begonia in there, might have gotten swallowed up. So we need to make sure that we give them, you know, just that little bit of extra room. So I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I do, when I look at begonias, oftentimes begonias do have a tendency to grow to one direction. Not all the time, but like I noticed this side's a little flatter. Now that could be just how it was growing, but that's pretty common, especially like you'll notice it even more so with the trailing varieties. So I want to make sure I'm getting it kind of even here. I think that's going to be pretty good. So going to get that one in and then time for this one. And man, this nonstop yellow, that is a great yellow. I will say that. And now in general, we let the begonias dry down a quite a bit as well as Calibrachoa does like to dry out between waterings. And so, oh, which way do I want to go? I think I'm going to go, I'm probably going against the grain here or against my own advice here. I maybe should point it. No, I'm going to point it. I'm going to, I don't know which way to do it. So I'm going to go halfway between the two options. Uh, so because begonias and Calibrachoas tend to like to dry out between uh, waterings, it's a pretty good idea to put these together, especially because I know that the Angelonia is also a drought tolerant plant. So we're not going to ever let these containers dry out, but we're going to make sure that we don't give them tons and tons of water and keep them really wet all the time because uh, none of these plants want to have wet feet. And when we say wet feet, that just means like kind of that really wet kind of mucky uh, soil. You don't want that. Usually in general, there aren't a lot of plants that like it that wet. So you have to be careful that you don't overwater. So I think we've got something going on here. So we're going to just I'll turn it here so you can see. So we are going to have different yellows on each side, but we're going to be able to see how the two types compare. That's the selenia and the nonstop. I think this caliber koa is going to be beautiful. This Angelonia is always fantastic. So, um, and this is, you'll notice Angelonia open from the bottom up. So this one's almost done. There's just a couple more blooms on here. The nice thing about Angelonia, because it goes upwards, you don't always notice the spent flowers on the bottom. Now this one is pretty much done, but like uh, a couple of these have a lot of spent flowers on the bottom and you don't even notice them because it's on the top. Other flowers that start from the top down, it becomes pretty obvious when the tips are all spent and then everything on the bottom. There's not that many that do that, but it does make a difference. So anyway, I better move on to the next one because uh, we still got two more to plant. 
So for this container, we decided to go black and white. We're skipping color and we're just going with black and white. And part of that inspiration came from this uh, vertigo grass. This is a beautiful grass. It gets very, very dark in the sunlight. If it's not getting enough sun, it's not going to be quite as dark. This thing's very vigorous. It gets quite large. So you do need to make sure that you're giving enough space and be careful what you plant it with because it could just swallow up your other plants. So be careful about that. And then we wanted to just kind of add a couple of whites that we wanted to work with. So this uh, salvia here, this is the Sally Fun Pure White, and it is a fantastic white salvia. Sometimes the other salvias that are white are, I don't know, they're just a little lackluster. This one really has like an intensity in the white and the flowers are quite large, uh, so they don't get lost. They will hold up in a container, so really happy with that one. Uh, we wanted to make sure and put some of the Superbina white out because it's a, that's just a really fantastic verbena. It gets really big, goes over the edge. We did want to put some of the Supertunia Latte. This is that kind of black and white stripe. It's just a beautiful uh, petunia. And uh, there's another one called Crazy Tunia Black and White that is quite similar. Uh, so that one would probably work in this situation here. But we love the, the size and the vigor and the growth habit of the Supertunia. This one here, now it looks a little mangy right now, but this is a uh, itsy white petunia. And this is more of a blanket petunia. It kind of spreads out. It Maybe the flower looks a little bit more like a bacopa. It's really quite incredible how it grows. So we wanted to see how that one fit in there. And then for the center, we thought, well, we do need something else in there that's black. So, I mean, our first thought was the Sweet Caroline Sweetheart uh, Jet Black uh, Sweet Potato Vine or Ipomia. But then we were like, sometimes, I don't know, I'm gonna be honest with you, sometimes sweet potato vine, I have a love-hate thing with it because I think it looks beautiful when it's kind of cascading over the edge and doing its thing. But I didn't, we didn't want to put two in here because these can be pretty vigorous, even though the Sweetheart series uh, you know, is a little more tame than some of the other ones that are out there. It just is one of those things where, you know, if we put two in here, it could get out of control. So we were going to only put one, but then, you know, you never know if it's going to go more this way or that way. So you got to train it. And I thought, you know what, let's not use that. And let's take the chance to use some of the black petunias that are out there that are out there. These have become very popular in the last couple of years. And so we had three different kinds. So let me show you what we've got here. So this one here is the uh, Crazy Tunia Black Mamba. This one is probably the easiest one for people to find. I've seen it in other places as well. Although we have had a lot of people come in asking for them. We're sold out. These are the last ones we have. Uh, then the other one that I have here is the Black Ray. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's pretty hard for me to tell the difference between the two. The flowers look very, very similar. Uh, this one, the Crazy Tunia is supposed to get a little bit bigger, but I don't know. They've been growing very, very similarly. I, I'm just not sure. And then we had a third one, and that one is called the uh, Starlet Velvet. And I'm going to be honest with you, when it first opens, it's very black. In fact, it, it's a very rich, dark black but it does tend to fade to this a little bit more purple. I don't know how it looks on the camera, but it definitely looks more of kind of that midnight purple kind of color to it. So not quite as black, still would work, especially if you're going for that kind of goth garden kind of look. This would be a beautiful one because it's such a dark, rich purple, but not making the cut for me. So what I thought I'd do for this one is just put both of them in and put them side by side. If they don't grow the same, it's not going to be that big a deal. I have a verbena and a petunia there, so they're just going to do their thing. Uh, so that that's, that's where we're experimenting. We're also not putting this grass right in the middle. We're going to put it towards the back. And I think that's going to be uh, just a nice little way to handle this because uh, it's going to force those other plants to go out. Oh boy, this has got some roots. Wow. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Ugh. Let's see here. Can we loosen them up a little? That's the thing about grasses. Holy smokes. Wow. This is just all. Ooh, boy. So this one, I think I am going to break up. They're not swirling really, but it's all root in there, man. Whoa. Wow. This is really crazy. I'm sure this is going to be just fine. I've noticed with grasses that they tend to just do their thing. So I'm just going to flare out the bottom because, wow, I didn't. This came, these came in really big, so we had to put them in those gallons because we were like, there's no way we'd be able to keep them watered something smaller. I'm so glad we put them in a gallon. Imagine what state they would be in if uh, we had had them in just a little tiny uh, container. Oh my gosh, these things. Whoa. Okay, so I don't know if I'm helping or hurting here, but I'm, I broke it up a little. You notice I don't normally break up 
the root balls. But when they're this kind of intense, I want to encourage it to kind of flare out. And so I'm just kind of ripping them up a little. This hopefully will encourage those roots to break free from this root ball because I do want it to do its thing and get taller and get its plumes. So I don't know if you're a root expert, let me know if you think I'm doing this right or wrong. I'm going to pull some of this off because I, I just feel like that's, that's, this is where it's starting to get knotted up. Wow. So here I am, the, a guy who hasn't had to break a single root. Wow. Maybe I'm doing more damage than good. I don't know. What do you guys think? Was this a bad idea for me to work them this much? I just feel like, you know what? We're making this happen. So, okay. So this is as far as I'm going to go with that because my goodness, that was quite, that was a workout. I'm going to definitely got some forearm workout going. Okay. So I want to get this in here. Okay. Vertigo grass. I hope you are happy getting this extra room because wow, that is, you were really well behaved for being that crammed into that pot. Okay. Next up, I'll do this super tunia latte now and you can see this is much more normal this is what i'm used to i don't need to break anything up in that root ball because it's we've got the healthy soil and we got a healthy plant now i could go through i probably uh, i could go through and trim these up but you know what i'm gonna leave them today that's kind of been my theme this week is yeah we're not going to do any trimming i guess i just don't feel like it and you know what that's okay next up i'm going to put in this verbena so and I'm just going to go part way with this. Well, no, I can't. I have to make sure I have room for my salvias. Okay, we'll get this one. I probably should have left them in place so I knew exactly where I was going. Okay, so I'm going to do it. It seems to be naturally growing in that direction, so we're going to put it that way. And then... I'll put my salvias in next. So I'm just going to put these towards the outside here because I know this grass has a lot of vigor. And so I don't want it to completely crowd out these salvias because these salvias like to be upright. They're not going to like being pushed outward that much, although I have a feeling this grass is definitely going to do a number on them. So let me just turn it. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing over here, but I want to make sure I get this right. And I don't feel like getting up and moving over to the other side. Okay, so again, these, these roots are just fine. I don't need to do any, any manipulation on those, but wow, see what I mean? I mean, I mentioned this in another one where the grasses, you know, they can, they can really get a root system going. That's exactly what I meant when I said that. So now... Do I have room for two petunias? I mean, this is, I'm kind of pushing it a little. I could probably get away with just one, but you know what? I'm gonna put them right there. We're gonna do it. We're gonna put, this is, you know, here I am, the guy who says, you know, less is more, but I wanna make sure. Now I wanna make sure that I put my tag over here so I know which one is the ray. So the ray is on that side. So let's see how this one goes. Yeah, I'm, I think this is going to be just fine. And then I'm going to put this one over here. I want to make sure I grab a black mamba. Yep, there's a mamba. And we'll pop that one in. So we'll see. Now, if they end up looking very different over the course of the summer, well, we'll know exactly what's which one we maybe like better, or maybe we like them both interchangeable like that, or maybe they're really very much more similar than we expect. So, okay, we have one more to plant up and then I've got these done. So let's jump on over to the next one. For this last container, we have a bit of a salmon coral theme going on here. So we definitely want to use another canna just because they did so well in the containers and you know they do well with this extra space down at the bottom for their roots to develop. So this one here is the Canova Mango. And this is one of those situations where mango with most flowers means it's got kind of more of an orange. We have like a Calabricoa that's mango, that's orangey colored. There's a Crossandra that's more orangey peach. This one is definitely more of that kind of salmon coral type of color. So, you know, 
it's so hard with plants to go based on the name and don't get me into the whole purple versus blue uh, conversation because that drives me crazy as well. Uh, we added this plant here and this is our big experiment because this is a fuchsia, it's called Garden Meister and this one gets quite large, has these amazing like long trumpet shaped flowers in that beautiful kind of coral type color. This is one that's new for us. We've never grown it before, and so we want to give it a try and see what it does. Now, it says right on the tag, this is a part shade plant, but I've seen so many people online who grow it in full sun. And so I'm kind of thinking that here in northern Michigan, we're going to be able to pull off full sun. I did a little bit more work, research, and they said as long as it doesn't dry out, it usually can handle more sun than normal. But if you're in a really dry climate, you either need to mist it all the time and keep it watered all the time. So if you're in a dry climate, keep this one in the shade. Uh, but for us, we're going to give it a try. The other advantage that we have is we could always turn this pot so that it's kind of shading, so the can is doing a little bit of shade action here. So we'll just keep an eye on it, but I think it's going to be okay. I just have faith in it. And then we're using, these are the Fantasia uh, Flamingo Rose Geraniums. This is new for us this year. It's the first time we've done the Fantasia, and this color is new. Definitely has that flamingo kind of salmon-y, shrimp pink kind of color to it. So a little bit different. It's definitely not our normal lighter salmon color that we've seen before. So very unique color. And then we also have the Supertunia Bermuda Beach. This was an improved color this year. This has been a really nice performing petunia. Uh, it was the first one to start blooming and it hasn't stopped at all. And these we've had in the back here, not getting enough fertilizer, but still doing quite well. So that's that says a lot about the plant. And then this one here, this is a uh, super bean of sparkling amethyst, which is interesting because we didn't order any sparkling amethyst, but some of our uh, super venus opened this color. So they, we had it marked as mystery because at first we were very confused, uh, but it was a pleasant mistake for us to get just two of these plants. So two of our plants opened the wrong color. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a little cough there. But this one here, you'll notice has two colors in it. I think it actually has two plants. Uh, they might've been next to each other on the plant, uh, on the bench. This is a, probably a super, oh, this is a super vena cobalt blue, uh, beautiful color. I think last year they called it imperial blue, but they changed the name. Uh, but with verbena, it's kind of interesting because if these branches touch soil, quite often they'll root. This, that's what could have happened here. We could have had one next to it, it rooted. And then when we were going through trimming, we may have actually cut it off the mother plant and it had rooted in with this one here. And we thought, hey, this is just a nice, <laughs> it, it looks good together. We're gonna leave them. And then we are also putting in, since we saw that one there, Stacy was like, well, then it needs a friend. So she wanted to have one more Super Bean uh, Cobalt Blue just tucked in the back. And the advantage to having it in the back there too is if we're rotating it or anything, it looks like it's intentional. It doesn't look like we have these tall wall plants here. We'll have something trailing on the back that's, you know, doesn't, we don't need it, but we're going to do that anyway. So normally in this kind of scenario, I will start with my tallest plants. Uh, that's just kind of how I do it. I find it a little easier to then work around those. Uh, once the small ones are in, sometimes the, the big ones become kind of in the way or they kind of plow over the other plants. So um, I'm going to keep these kind of in the center. I'm going to have to go a little deeper. There we go. Nice job, Canna. Now it doesn't look very straight, so we're going to straighten it out. Hope that's good. And then I'm going to get this one out. So let's see how this one works. Now, you, everybody always asks, what are these little white seed things in here? We use uh, rice hulls, which is a byproduct of the rice industry, as a mulch for some of our plants. So if you see that, it's not some kind of secret ingredient. You don't need it. Your garden will do fine without it, but we like to have it. It's, it helps us out a little bit in certain situations. So we like to try a couple plants with it anyway. Okay. Okay, our big mamas are in here. So now let's work with the next ones. Uh, we decided to go with two of the Fantasia Flamingo Rose simply because uh, we want to make sure that these geraniums were able to make a bit of a statement. And these are, you know, decent sized geraniums. They, they, do hold their own, but we want to make sure that we were just getting that little bit of extra oomph out of them. And you'll notice that all of these colors are slightly different, so we definitely don't have a matchy-matchy kind of scenario here, but we're okay with that. I think that um, these colors are all close enough. They kind of seem like they're in the same family, so it'll probably be pretty nice as we go. So in this empty spot, I have room for two plants. So what I'm going to do the Bermuda Beach is going to go here, and then between these two plants, I'm going to put 
this uh, super venous sparkling amethyst just because if i put something between these two colors it's going to be even less noticeable at, that you know they're not an exact match and hopefully it'll create kind of a visual barrier that will just kind of fill in the blanks with our eye and our mind uh, so that they'll look like they're supposed to be uh, you know part of the same palette and then let's pop this in yeah i think these look beautiful together it's kind of a it's a different color combination for us than what we would normally use as well and while i'm back here i'm going to just stick this cobalt blue superbina let's see yeah we'll get that in there i think that'll be it's like a good little safety net having this one in the back probably don't need it but i don't know and the uh, cobalt blue we have some hanging behind me here it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, verbena as well. So now we got to get these other two in here. So let me move on over. I got containers all over the place here. Oops. Okay. Now let's get these two in. So this is just a repeat of the other side. I am very happy with the superbena uh, verbena. It's one. It's definitely my favorite. It's got a really nice vigor to it and as long as it's getting just consistent water doesn't need tons of water but consistent water and fertilizer it tends to just keep flowering and flowering uh, i've had verbena before where i found myself deadheading it a lot or it going in and out of flower cycle so it flower and then it'd take a break and then it flower i don't notice that if i keep that consistent water and fertilizer with uh, the superbena it tends to just keep going so i love that about that about the you know that particular variety I think there's probably others that that's the case but i really notice it with these okay folks i think i'm done with these i hope you like them i'm really curious to hear if there's some experimentation that you're doing this year if you're just trying to arrange your plants in a different way or are you you know totally trying crazy different plants like putting a part shade plant in the sun just because some people on the internet said it's possible i have faith though because we have been keeping this in the full sun greenhouse and it hasn't even you know had an issue there's not even a single brown leaf on it so uh so far so good so i'm, I'm confident with that so ah, thanks for watching everybody i do appreciate your comments so you guys have been really really supportive and just wonderful and i i do appreciate you guys watching commenting liking all that kind of stuff uh that feedback really does mean a lot to me because it you know it takes a little extra time to record but when i know somebody's watching and getting information out of this it does make it much more uh, valuable even to me knowing that uh, I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm helping you guys out a little bit too, maybe getting some ideas. So thank you. And I'll see you guys all in the next video.